a little bit of an exhaust leak there. But that ain't nothing compared to this side. <laughs> yep. It didn't sound that loud though. I know, I'm surprised too. Uh... That's at least on the baffle side down there. Well, there's something you don't see every day. Well, unless you live here. Should have been done four months ago <laughs> we put this wiper on we had to use too long of a bolt for it so i'm finally going to cut it off that will make some of you very very happy <laughs> if i can do this without screwing up my bus Today has changed the batteries in my TPMS sensors day. There's little set screws that hold these on. Um, I stopped using them. They, they don't need it. And when you take them on and off, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, I bought these batteries off Amazon relatively inexpensively. Um, just take off this little thing right here. Uh, one thing that I realized is if you take this off, um, wrap it up in tape when you're done to keep water out of it. There's an O-ring there, but I've had water get into one of them and ruin it. Um, so I prefer to keep the water out of them. So let's do it. Just gotta get it out. <laughs> gotta try magnet. That worked. Grab the wrong pack of batteries out of the shelf there, but these are the right ones. Um, I've got tons of these batteries on the bus. Keep the water out of them. I like to fold that over. So when I come back next time, it's easier to get off. These tell me my tire pressures and my tire temperatures going down the road. That's all there is to it. Let's go to the next one. This one actually has a hole in it here on the screwdriver over time, changing the batteries a few times.
Okay, that cleaned up pretty good inside there. I don't know if you see it. Probably gonna need to invest in a new TPMS system soon. I have one sensor that's bad, it's been bad for a couple years. I can get a replacement, I just haven't got around to doing it, but I think I'm gonna maybe get a different system. trim right here and it's been catching my shoe and when I go to release the throttle my shoe's been stuck on it it's actually happened to me twice now so I'm gonna take I'm gonna kind of grind it down a little bit get the edges off of it and then uh, I'm gonna put some clear epoxy kind of build it up so it's smooth so there's no rough edges there I don't want that to ever happen again but um, hopefully that can solve that issue okay so I put some epoxy on it and then threw a little paint on it rainy start here this morning. Stupid landed on Walmart again. I was just driving on the interstate and I heard a little high pitch noise I'd never heard before. It was real quiet. It wasn't super, super loud. And uh, I'm watching my temperature gauge and I've been running right around 175 for the last half hour, uh, plus or minus two degrees either way. And then all of a sudden I see it creep up. It's getting closer to 180. And then I look at it about 30 seconds later, and it's 182. And then I'm watching it, it goes 183, 184. I'm like that is completely not normal it's cool outside it's raining um so, something's going on so there's an exit coming up in about a half mile i see uh my temperature gets up to 187 before i get off on the exit ramp so it was climbing quickly and i pull off here and i've lost a, a big section of my shroud has been impacted by the fan and it's curled up in here if you can i don't know if i can get a good angle on this here so the fan has hit the radiator shroud and bent it back like a, a tin can, I guess. The fan has got some nicks on it, um, but it's not horrid. Um, man, I can't really. Let's see if I can get a better angle of this for you. If 
big chunk isn't supposed to be up there. That's supposed to be down here. So I broke off the piece that hit and curled up in there so it can't strike it anymore. And then because I broke this off here, I'm just, I drilled it out. I'm gonna just quickly drop another bolt in there for right now that I've got. And uh, hopefully that'll stop it from flexing. So I'm not sure if this broke first and that allowed that to come up down there, but this is what I got. Easy at hand here. like it's good enough for right now I need to put a bigger bolt in there with some washers on it to hold that but that'll get us we only got about 80 miles more to go so today uh, so you know temporary roadside fix it'll be good Plugs. No, it does not. The switch still needs to get flipped. Stream Motorhome. 
What year is this? 94. Man, I would have thought it was earlier than that. How many years did they make them? Well, they started with an Argosy, I think, in the 70s. Yeah. And this was getting really close to the end of the aluminum ones. 96 might have been the last year. Is it is it 40 foot? Uh, 36. And it's called a 36 Classic, I think. It's on a Chevrolet uh, P30 chassis that they extended and put the tag under. It just looks long. It's all aluminum skin. Well, that bottom perks fiberglass, I think. No, they call it 36. Yep. That's beautiful. And probably going to be for sale, right? Definitely going to be for sale, but I got to I got to get it ready for sale. It, it, it could be spring before it's on the market. Check the mileage. Is it accurate? Forty-seven thousand. Yeah. Wow. That's actually a lot of miles for a motorhome. A lot of people don't usually put that many miles on them, you know? But yeah, that's, it's very nice. All original. Correct, including the Airstream mattress. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep, very nice. got this sweet little beauty here too. So we've been going through the book here and looking up all of it. This has all the filter numbers, fluids, everything for the for the Bluebird here. And uh, we're gonna go through and do services. Pretty much so everything, uh, oil, everything except the transmission which has transcend in it. We don't need to do that, but we're gonna change the filter on it. Air filter, oil filter, fuel filters, uh, both generator and engine, uh, transmission filter, coolant. It's got the green stuff in it, so it hasn't been changed in a while anyways, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure that for sure that we have the right stuff in there since it's a wet liner, so we don't have any cavitation issues. And then uh, I think go through and look at like wheel bearings, that kind of stuff. Uh, just general routine maintenance on it. The bus overall is in really good shape. The engine sounds really tight. I love it out here. Taking the Wonder Lodge for a quick test run here. Christian's been hanging out with us here today too. So you just have horses out here in this, they just roam around in here and they won't go across the cattle guard either? Correct. Wow. Uh, these, this is breeding stock. What type of horses are they? Uh-huh. <laughs> Four-legged. Four-legged. <laughs> Best kind. <laughs> uh, they, they're for uh, cowboy and rodeo stock, for lack of a better term. I'm okay. sure that they're probably quarter horses, or they're not thoroughbred. Um, All right, they're not running the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. But, yeah, we... Uh, we got about 10 of them, 8 of them or 10 of them. And they oh, there goes a whole bunch of deer running through the field over there, too. Oh, you'll see a lot of that. There's, we're, we're thick with deer here. A lot of people out here hunt and lease, lease for hunting. Looks like I see seven of them. <laughs> yeah, I 
I can see him now. Yeah. Coyotes chasing him. <laughs> Looks like a white tail out there. Yeah. There's a lot of exotics down here too. A lot of axis deer in the hill country where I live too. Well, yeah, high fenced. We don't have any high. Well, that's not true. We got a high fence across the street, but we don't keep anything in there anymore. I had a hippopotamus once. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Her, uh, How do you end up with a hippopotamus? Uh, her husband, uh, excuse me, her father was, uh, who had this ranch before she got it from him, uh, liked to dabble in those things. And there was some <laughs> wildebeest in there for a while, and then they got rid of those and had something else. And then there was a pygmy. Hippopotamus. <laughs> and when she they built her pen and all this stuff, when she first got out here, Kelsey couldn't have been five years old. Everyone's going and feeding it and had it, handing it iceberg lettuce, and everybody was happy. Well, it turns out hippopotamuses, once they figure out that this is their home, they're mean. Oh, man. Yeah. So, how's our temperature doing? temperature just above 200. Our water temperature is at 185. Transmissions at looks like about 175. Yeah, I'm surprised it's the engine's that warm already for just getting on the interstate. That that little road was it's warm even today. Yeah, yeah well, it is hot today. Well, that was a five mile drive, too. Really. Yeah. I know, it just doesn't seem like it. That's what happens when you're having fun, right? That's right. A little gusty outside today, too. I'm getting condensation. So we got all three the tag axle, the drive axle. And the steer axle, we should have weights for all three. Wonder Lodge, they, they did some really cool stuff. Makes you want to wander the highways. 39. 39.5. 39.5. Yeah, so 12,700 on the steer axle. Is, that's quite a bit. That's, that generator really adds to it up there. Mm -hmm. 18,180 on the drive axle, which that's low. That's that's lower. That's really low. What does that mean? That my tag's overweight? Well, your tag's at 86. I don't know what your tag. We'll have to look and see. To see what I gotta look. I, I don't. I don't think it's. I think it's only supposed to be about 20 percent of the drive. 15 percent maybe. Yeah. Is that, does that sound about right? Uh, no, I think it's gonna be more than that. But yeah, we'll we'll look at your book and see what it says. Okay. 